Hey guys, today I'm going to do a little rundown on my GH5 photography settings as requested by a lot of you. Uh, I'm not a professional photographer, but I do have my photos up in a few galleries around where I live and I'm pretty happy with the results that I've gotten with the GH5. Um, the settings that I use, there's nothing too crazy, you'll see nothing insane about the settings that I use. Uh, a lot of it does have to do with properly exposing your image um, and I'll show you the tools that I use to do that. And then as well as selecting the time that you're shooting. Uh, the best photographers that I know probably shoot for about 15 minutes a day when the light is perfect and that's how they get those amazing, amazing shots. So between those two things, uh, you know, that's a very important time of day. And then also the gear that you're using, what type of glass you have on your GH5. And I have videos on my setup uh, linked below if you want to see that. But yeah, I'll run through my GH5 photography settings for this year and maybe you guys can get a few tips from there. Uh, don't forget, I have my GH5 filmmaking workshop, so sign up for that below if you're interested. And yeah, check out the settings. Here are the settings I used to get some of those photos that you just saw on my GH5. So hopping in here, we've got the camera panel. I am in manual mode uh, on the top wheel there. And then when I open up the menu here, you'll see my aspect ratio is at 16.9 because I want my photos to be typical widescreen photos. I mean, you could change it if you want, if you want a different aspect ratio. But in my opinion, sticking to classic 16.9 is usually the way to go. Picture size, keeping it at large because I want the highest quality, of course. And then down to quality. This is where it gets kind of interesting. Uh, highest quality is this guy right at the top. Um, let me see if that's a little overexposed here. I know you're good. Um, but I keep mine on raw and the largest file size just to have the raw image, especially if I'm doing night photography, having the raw image, it just has a bit more data in it than if you just shoot in normal JPEG. Uh, the raw Panasonic files are a bit of a bummer to try and open. You need an extension to open them in Lightroom, but it's good just to have the raw. If you have enough memory on your camera, shoot with raw and in this format, because you'll get both files. Uh, if you're limited on memory, go up to the top here and just choose highest quality image. So I keep it on raw and highest quality. Scrolling down, I have my photo style. This is an interesting part. I keep it very similar to my normal settings for my video actually it's very very similar so let me just dial this down a bit there we go so as per usual at the top here i've got contrast at minus one i've got sharpness at minus five which i think is huge like it's like that's a key with the gh5 i've seen a lot of footage and a lot of photography with the gh5 that's just a little bit too sharp for my liking i like it to look a bit more cinematic or a bit more classic so sharpness at minus five noise reduction at minus one saturation at minus one and then hue set to zero so that's how i have my color profile set up and then everything else down here is pretty standard i believe i haven't changed too much color space is rgb uh, metering mode that's all normal i have my eye dynamics set to low and then do, do, do what else do we have here yeah nothing too too special in this area and then one of the key parts obviously with fo with photography is exposure so there's a few tools on the gh5 that are going to help you dial in your exposure for sure and these are these have been a huge help to me so i changed my iso increments the same for video i changed it to one third um, instead of one and i'll show you what that means so i pop out here and my ISO is down there in the bottom. We're at 320 right now. And you see I'm able to go up in smaller increments. Usually it just jumps in hundreds. So usually I'd go from 200 to 300. But now I have a little smaller increment and it allows me a bit more control over my image. So ISO increments set to one third EV. I find that very helpful. Um, extended ISO is on, but I mean, I never really use it anyways. Uh, all this is pretty much default. I'm just looking for things. Uh, yeah, the manual focus assist I have set to this right now. Uh, this mode, it's kind of helpful. It zooms in. So you see there's a little, uh, there's a little bubble there when I zoom in that allows me to see before I take a photo what's in focus. And then I half press and it's gone. So I focus, 
zooms in, get my focus set, half press the shutter, comes back, and I can make sure that my shot is gonna be focused well. So that's the manual focus assist set to this guy right here. And uh, that's been a pretty helpful tool for sure. So I'd recommend that. Scrolling down here. Let's see what else we have. Peaking, focus peaking is huge, whether video or photo. Focus peaking is a must use, I think. And I have mine on and you can set it. My detect level is set to high and my display color is kind of like a yellow green. I'm kind of colorblind, but either way, I can see it very well. If you don't know what focus peaking is here back in the camera, when I zoom, you can, I think you guys will be able to see it. The things that are in focus turn that kind of yellow and green color. So I can see what's in focus rather than just kind of eyeballing it. Focus peaking on for sure. That is a huge, huge help. Histogram on at all times up here in the corner. And you'll see as I open her up, it shows me, uh-oh, we're blowing things out. Um, we need to bring it back down and keep everything between zero and 100. So the blacks and the whites. Um, if your image is heavily exposed one way, you're going to know that you're shooting uh, probably an incorrect exposure. It's going to be either blown out or too dark. So histogram is on. Guideline, I just use the standard kind of grid, but that is a personal preference. So uh, do whatever you like with that. Center markers off. Zebra stripes. I've talked about these for video. Huge, huge, huge help. I have zebra one and you can set them to do anything. So here's what we're looking at in zebra. Right now, my zebra stripes, which I'll show you in a second, are going to show me any time a part of my image is overexposed above 100%. So when we go back to the screen here, let me darken it. On the histogram, you'll see that nothing is over this right side here. Um, it's all within the box. And the, the uh, zebra stripes will show me when I start to blow out my image. So I'm going to open it up here. You can see a little bit there already. And basically, that means that my image is overexposed 100%. Essentially, there's no more data there. It's like all white. So if your image is looking real overexposed, you're going to get crazy, crazy zebra stripes. And exposure is a funny thing with photos and videos because there's situations where you'll have a dark foreground and a bright sky, and maybe you will have to overexpose part of the image. So it's not like a hard, hard rule that you can never have some zebra stripes uh, before you take an image, but just keep an eye on it. And if your image is heavily, heavily overexposed, I mean, just know that's kind of the style you're going to get. Um, so zebra stripes, very, very important. And then you can set your own custom right now, but mine's at set to 100%, as I said. Um, so anytime things are over 100%, I will know with my stripes. And what else do we have? Monitor info, obviously, I want it on. Uh, I think that is about it. As I mentioned, there's nothing too crazy in there. A lot of the photography with the GH5 has to do with how you expose your image, what type of glass that you're using, and what time of day it is, which is the biggest, biggest thing with photography. What time of day is it? The best photographers that I know shoot about <laughs> like 10 minutes. They shoot sunset in the morning or they shoot golden hour at night and it's almost always later than I think like when I'm putting my camera away they're just getting ready to shoot they love that kind of blue hour which you might have heard Alex Stroll talk about so it's really about the glass and the timing but you can also help yourself by making sure that your settings are dialed in so let me know below if you have any tips or comments on my settings or personal preferences or if this helped you I'll be back with some more GH5 tutorials in the future, and yeah, see you soon.